so as part of uh, I mean uh, learning service on the broadcast receiver first I am going to create a small code snippet so how the service and broadcast receiver independently works so we'll, we'll understand that then we will migrate into our main core project called SMS replier and we will think about adding them into that project so a simple example I'll simply I create a service but I will be adding the broadcast receiver also so okay as usual blank activity all default stuffs Executing. Now it is done. I'm going to keep two buttons so that uh, my service could be started. Going to keep two strings, so it's going to display start and stop. So let me add them. I keep gravity set to star sorry um, center match pattern will be too bigger simply give some 250 dp as long as mine is not so complex sort of margins which I always prefer okay, okay so as part of uh, this uh, service because I need a help of an activity so it's very evident that without an activity it seems to be I cannot create a service hopefully correct uh, but not always true because only starting and stopping job this uh, activity is going to do but after that get disassociate itself so that some action can perform uh, which can trigger the activity sorry service to start so I'm not going to conclude exclusively the activity alone can perform that action it could be any action where the user even touch the screen also so touching a screen if I can detect the service can be started with the help of broadcast receiver so but for this example 
I am just using an activity to do to complete the job of starting the service or stopping the service. Okay, let me initialize them. Just doing it quietly. Hope you already know about that. Okay, now we need to write the service, which is yeah, which is uh, this activity attempt to do. A service can be created. A class, nothing but an Android class. So right clicking on the package and picking up the service or as we already know create a simple java class uh, extended to a class called service so let's see what is that so name it so let me give it as some my service this exported enable stuff i am not going to write at this point if you notice uh, it is trying to give you some sort of suggestion whether or not the service can be initiated by the system enabled will I, I, as i was talking about some sort of action can trigger the service to start but we had to think about the scenario whether such a situation needed or not. So I'm just going to uncheck both so that I do not mess up anything. Okay, it created something for me. As you notice, this cre it created a class and extends a class called service. It is same like an activity, that time it was an activity, this time it is a service. So this class is going to be a service, service mean a longer running process running behind the screen. And there is no set content view, no, no, I mean in this case there is no UI at all because it is going to run throughout in background, no UI required at all. And this binder and all the stuff where the service connection happens, uh, we had to think about the scenario also because just now I'm creating the service, I may end up seeing whether the service need to communicate to something else, maybe an activity or somewhere else. Whether the situation I will end up, that's a question at all. So I'll, I'll come back to that a little later. So now it has a constructor. I'm going to implement service lifecycle methods. More than enough. going to run I will put some sort of constants It means what's the difference you may ask because uh, a service started doesn't mean it only executed on create method it is alive it is running maybe any method you subsequently call will work the destroy is yes, is completely destroyed no more in the memory and there's no way to activate it back for that purpose i kept it running and stopped some words to give you a further clarification so if i see in my log Service started mean my service is successfully started and running in the background. 
and when I see this, my service is totally removed from the background and no more in the memory. So any service is already started cannot be started again. Any activity, any service which is already stopped cannot be stopped again. And particularly uh, true, a, a stopped service can only be started or a started service can only be stopped. So remember, we will see that scenario. When I create this class, this Android Studio would have done something in the memory, I mean in the manifest as well. If you look at the manifest, it added an entry of a name called service and enable export that we had to come to it, but actually what it simply requires a kind of a declaration in the manifest. That's it, it requires. Without declaring a service in the manifest, you try to start it, it won't be respected. You may get an exception error or something else, ANR. So any service you try to create, you have to make sure it's been mentioned in the manifest. I mean it is registered in the manifest so that system allocates memory for it so that it can run throughout. This is very important. Since Android Studio does it by default, sometimes you may not notice it. Uh, if you are using Eclipse, Eclipse doesn't do I think. Uh, I mean most recent version does but uh, some of developer always do manually entering them in the manifest if they do not use it as a predefined class. Okay, now the, uh, the service class has been written. So how to start the service? There is always an intent to help us. This time intent going to need a source starting. And the destination my service dot class there is some method called start service we should not use start activity this time so this will trigger your service to start executing whatever code we have written inside the classes and the similar one for stop start and stop I just kept the separate code I'm going to need a ADM because a long message I'm going to see Android device monitor I prefer this one and it works perfectly to see the background logs of your device or emulator. The built in one which is your Android Studio comes at the bottom, put it at the bottom sometime does not display everything. So I may need a filter to get attached so that I can only see them. So the tag name I added, that's the reason I gave the tag name as a constant. We add a filter and name it by a log tag. The tag name is important, filter name could be anything. Okay, I've added a filter, so only the specific log messages or debug messages uh, pertinent to this particular filter will be displayed in this. Otherwise, if you want to see the all logs of your device, you can move between them, the top one and the bottom. Let me start. Okay, my apps, my app started. Now let me try to click on start button. I think nothing is up here. This is always troublesome for us. Okay, I 
I'll do one thing. My emulator may have got corrupted. Please get a new emulator for me. Notice it happens to a latest emulator. I'm just trying to go back to a older emulator. It only happens in Mac. It doesn't happen in uh, Windows machine. 